Well, I want to begin by saying it's finally here, but once again, it feels as though maybe in the blink of an eye or perhaps a little less, it's Friday. Nevertheless, that is good news and a great way to start off a program. The 21st day of July has been another hot one. We've still got more of the same. High pressure not giving us any type of a break. We had earlier today the closest that we've had to a chance of some showers and storms for quite some time, but you had to be a little bit more northerly to get in on that action as it just kind of grazed the viewing area for the most part and not a drop here in the downtown area above the newsroom. But some folks, like I said, more to the north did get in on some passing showers. We're going to be passed over in that regards for the next day or so. Heat and humidity still in town tomorrow. High pressure will start to finally give way. We'll see the upper 80s on Sunday and a bit of a better chance of some showers that I'll outline in more detail and definitely a cool down on its way next week. Headlines tonight include a few updates from a few of our stories last night. A McGoffin County residence burglarized in the middle of the day yesterday on 114. I'll take you to the scene, tell you what homeowners and the victims told me earlier today in hopes that you might recognize or Someone you know may come into contact with a lot of some or any of the jewelry that was taken from this residence. Another day, another meth arrest, and a whole long list of news and information. And to be quite honest, I perhaps could get through maybe midweek, if not the entire week right now, with the news we're already working on. The Gulf County Board of Education met last night. Still have that meeting in edit, uh, as we do possibly a few other meetings. And I've still got some other updates on a few reports from last night even uh, that we're awaiting some further details. I'll try to shed some more light on that in just a few moments. Another day, another busy day of reporting. I sat down with some friends earlier today for a little while off camera at their residence and they gave me all the details that they could in regards to hoping that we could share them with you and that might lead to an identity of someone who broke into their house yesterday and stole a great deal of jewelry, much of which simply priceless in regards to the type of thing that you just can't replace. Wedding sets, things of that nature, uh, and a lot of other personal items were taken in the middle of the day, right on 114, at the residence of Randy and Brenda Allen. Yeah, we live on 114, just before you get to Allen's Wholesale, also on the left side if you're going towards Prestonsburg. Brenda Allen left home yesterday while Randy was already at work. She left around 11 o'clock, came back at 4 that afternoon, and noticed that her garage door, which she believed was just only up about 6 or 12 inches when she left, was up to the tune of about 2 or 3 feet. She went ahead and entered the home and then began to notice some things missing, specifically jewelry in her bedroom. She immediately noticed that there was a nightstand drawer open that had been gone through and that there were also some items taken, a great deal of items collected over the course of her lifetime. They were actually carried out in a basket that they had been stored in. This is one of the identifying characteristics of the theft. This is a longer burger basket, a Mother's Day basket as it's called, brown with the liner and tag. It has a jewelry tray in it as well, and it was used to keep most of her jewelry in, and they just helped themselves to it. I'll go through the list of a lot of the jewelry in just a few seconds, but it appears as though that they helped themselves to the jewelry off of the off of the dresser or chest, if you will, that they went through the nightstand, that there were several other items taken, and then they fled the residence with all this jewelry and this basket uh, in tote. There's no indication that anything else was taken, but a great deal of personal jewelry and effects were taken from the Allen's residence. And it also appears that the thief or thieves attempted to break into two separate doors in the back of the home and then made their way around to the side or front of the residence, and that's where they found the garage door just open enough for someone to push their way in and then make their way inside the residence. Randy's gold citizen's watch, it's a man's watch, gold watch with a brown face was taken, and things that you just can't replace like a white gold wedding set, Brenda's wedding set. It's a white band with a, a white solitaire ring as well and a variety of other white and yellow gold jewelry a white and yellow gold ladies diamond cluster a gold ladies diamond cluster a white gold ladies bracelet now it also has a date i don't have the day of the date but i know that it was five something 1975 uh, that was engraved on the inside of that bracelet or somewhere on the bracelet and other various rings, earrings, bracelets, etc., just all the jewelry that they could find was taken from the home. And authorities, including Kentucky State Police Trooper Ryan Hale, who is investigating, 
are hopeful that some of these might be recognized by you or someone you know possibly whether or not someone is trying to sell these trade these what have you they're hopeful that they will turn up somewhere at least one of them will and that will lead authorities to some suspects in the case and some other useful information that authorities would like to have is whether or not someone driving by may have seen someone around the Allen's residence yesterday once again sometime between 11 and 4 with the evidence at the scene the indicating that they attempted to break into two doors in the back and then made their way around the home it's very likely that a motorist may have seen somebody and could give some sort of a description to authorities if you have any details once again you can contact the Kentucky State Police local authorities or the Allen's any help would be greatly appreciated one of the first things I do in the morning after maybe a cup of joe is sit down and get on to the Big Sandy Regional Detention Center website and a few others to see if any happenings during the overnight and as with another day, another meth arrest taking place in McGoffin County. According to arrest citations on this particular occasion and this arrest, Sackville Police Officer Joshua Peace was investigating the complaint of a stolen TV from a residence and he filed information to the residence of a Brittany Bailey at Cole Branch. It was there that he reportedly, as well as other officers, found in a bedroom a pink box that was said to have contained syringes, baggies, and a quantity of crystal methamphetamine. Also, several Percocets and other hydrocodone pills were found in the purse belonging to Brittany Bailey, who was arrested and lodged in the Big Sandy Detention Center on possession of a controlled substance, first degree for the methamphetamine, two counts of possession of a controlled substance for the pills, and possession of drug paraphernalia for the syringes that were said to have belonged to her, according to authorities. And Peace also made an observation that is just hard to miss with each report that I do of this nature. That the days of the shake and bake methamphetamine meth that we have been reporting on for so many years, the pop bottles where it is used to manufacture in a quick and um, relatively cheap manner are a thing of the past. It is crystal methamphetamine, high grade crystal meth that is making the headlines and involved with arrests on a daily basis here in Sagersville, McGoffin County. And of course, we are not alone with that issue. And law enforcement believes that that drug, that form of crystal methamphetamine, for the most part, if not all of it, is being brought to McGoffin County from elsewhere, possibly even, even originating out of the country. And on to our next story in regards to someone who was an inmate at the Big Sandy Regional Detention Center. A McGoffin County man, according to court records, has filed suit against the jail as well as its administrator and the jail authority board citing neglect for what he said was an assault at the hands of other inmates when he was in the facility. Documents indicate at this time that once again the lawsuit does name specifically the jail, the jail board, and jail administrator Pete Fitzpatrick in regards to a personal injury suit <clears throat> filed on behalf of an inmate who was in the Big Sandy Detention Center from October the 4th of last year through October the 17th, almost two weeks. Hager Ralph McGoffin County was jailed, according to records, on a domestic violence in the fourth degree charge. And after being there for two days on the sixth, he says, per his lawsuit, that he was assaulted by other inmates in his cell to the degree that he had to be hospitalized for his injuries or taken to the hospital. The suit also goes on to claim neglect on behalf of all those named in the suit, saying also that they should have been aware or known of the dangers presented to Rao as an inmate and they failed to abide by policy. During our next update on the story we'll get a response from the jail authority board as well as the administrator should they be able to issue such a statement. For now I'll be right back. To get high-speed internet on their state-of-the-art fiber optic network for all of your home and business solutions or to watch TV without a contract on over 200 digital channels with superb quality or stay connected with family and friends with 24-7 telephone service you can always depend on, contact Foothills Broadband today or just click on their link to the right to find out how they're working to provide the latest in communications at affordable prices with exceptional service at Foothills Broadband. 
Whether you need a little cash or are looking to save some big bucks, stop by Parkway Gun and Pawn. They'll loan you cash today on just about anything worth a dollar, and you can find for pennies on the dollar all that you see here and more. Tools, musical instruments, jewelry, gold, silver, long, and handguns, ammunition, and more. Parkway Gun and Pawn. July is here, and Appalachian Wireless is bringing the heat. We're giving up to $50 off any smartphone of your choosing this month. Samsung Galaxy S8, normally $149.99, now $99.99. Samsung GS7, normally $49.99, now only a penny. That's any smartphone up to $50 off its normal contract price. And it even includes the 128GB and 256GB models. Better hurry as supplies are limited. Two-year agreement required. Better service, bigger savings at Appalachian Wireless, an East Kentucky network company. Much more than diesel specialists, Black Smoke Performance is turning out excellent auto body collision paint and repair results with free quotes and estimates on everything from insurance jobs to that ding you got in the driveway. Custom lift kits, bed liners, winches and accessories, and full diagnostics and repair on anything gas or diesel from brakes to fluid changes to major auto repair. If you want it fixed, lifted, painted, customized, or just maintained, just call on the team at Black Smoke Performance in Dixie of Sagersville, 100 May Drive, or 349-8785. Parkway Pharmacy, now open earlier from 8 a.m. until 6 in the evening to better suit your schedule and lifestyle and to help you get better and live a healthier life. And if allergies are bogging you down, they're armed with the very best in over-the-counter relief for adults and your children. Reach owner pharmacist Jesse Rudd and his assistant pharmacist Megan Castle and their staff at 8 o'clock in the mornings or at 349-4400. Come by and check out this 2014 Jeep Compass 4x4 and come by and check out this luxurious, roomy, limited 2011 Town & Country. And this row of 2015 and 2016 Nissans and Fords and more, all like new, with low miles starting at $99.95. Check them all out at Broadway Auto Sales in Paintsville. Covering our local and area governmental meetings is, of course, part of the job and the programming here on Your News Today. Last night, it was a camera at the McGoffin County Board of Education meeting. That meeting I still have in edit and we will get to next week. The Johnson County Physical Court met in special session earlier this week after a rescheduling where they discussed finances and how black topping projects are going in the county, with the judge noting that they're not going as quickly as they had hoped, but indeed, they are going. After calling the meeting to order, approval of the previous meeting minutes, a transfer of $40,000 from the general fund to the jail fund, an amendment to the sheriff's budget being approved, as well as approval of the 2016 tax settlement and the second quarterly report from the county court clerk's office. Daniel gave a brief update on the Van Leer sewer project, saying that they were set to have a conference call later this week with Paintsville Utilities, with the county government, city government, the engineering company, the Division of Water, and others. He apologized for the slow process that it's been thus far, but they are still hopeful of seeing it completed. And then he gave an update on several ongoing blacktop projects in Johnson County. We started a, a very ambitious uh, blacktopping program uh, just a little bit south of a million dollars this year. We, uh, we had approximately uh, $600,000 from our own budget that we are utilizing in this uh, project. We had uh, $107,000 worth of flex funding from Frankfurt that we uh, were eligible for and we applied for and we were able to secure that. We had $133,000 of uh, discretionary funding from Franker, uh, and we were able to, to secure that. Uh, the flex funding, we had five roads that we uh, had named that we would uh, try to uh, get blacked off, and those are Blair Drive, Gray Mare Branch, Sparks Branch, if the press, if you got, I just got this information, I don't have copies of it, but I'd be happy to give you some after the meeting. Uh, Gray Branch, Sparks, Sparks Drive, Gerald Carr Road, and Isabella Lane. We, as I said, we estimated about 107,000 for all five roads. 
estimates were done at the old cost of $85 a ton for blacktop, and we found out that when we got started that the new cost for blacktop is $87.60. I'm having a hard time struggling with this, uh, Ronnie. The formula that we use or that, that the industry uses on blacktop normally, it's a good thing when, when oil prices go down and gasoline prices go down. Because less money to operate. So we were told if we enter into this contract, if that oil price goes down, we're going to get that buy that additional money. Uh, that's not the way it's working. And we it seems like they forgot to talk to us about a couple of other little formula items that goes in that. And uh, so instead of you know, gas prices are, have been holding pretty steady to 20, 230 or something for the last six or eight months, but our our blacktop price uh, went up two dollars and something a, a, a ton. So uh, we had a little less money, but we're going to struggle to try to get all those roads done anyway. Judge Daniel further detailed about $133,000 in discretionary funds to fix Narrows Fork. Salyer Branch, Homestead Estates, and Flatwoods Branch with those roads to be completed soon, and $600,000 of county funds that will go towards completing 21 roads being resurfaced. So far they have five of those done with 16 roads left. He said the black topping has gone considerably slower than expected due to the fact that the contractor has had to go on to other large state projects and then come back to Johnson County to complete these. But he says they will be completed as soon as possible. Hi, I'm Attorney Jeff Lovely. At my law office, we're determined to offer you and your family outstanding, cost-effective, and responsive legal services. I can help you if you've been injured in a car wreck. I'll be in your corner if you have a DUI or other criminal charges. You can file bankruptcy and stop those harassing phone calls. Or I'll fight for you and your children in divorce and custody cases. For all your legal services, contact me when it matters. In Syresville at 349-4522 and West Liberty at 743-1965. Curb your appetite for a good deal and some home cooking at your Sayersville Lee's Famous Recipe, where we started the under five buck daily special. Saturdays get a 10 piece hot and spicy wing dinner with all the fixings, only $4.69, $3.99 after four o'clock. And on Sundays, our famous chicken and dumpling special with homemade cobbler and ice cream, only $4.49, $3.99 after four. And we cater gatherings big or small at your Sayersville Lee's Famous Recipe. Hey ladies, the Seasonal Shop is having a women's sales event this week, now through Saturday. With great savings on all the great fashions and styles and accessories by Mud Pie and Charlie Page. Versatile designs from preppy to classy to bohemian in all clothing, shoes, bags, hats, scarves, and more. And be sure to come in and see the new home decor that's been arriving for weeks with the latest trends and colors of the season during our women's sales event through Saturday, only at Fraser's Prater Drug Seasonal Shop. Yes, Logan makes the best truck bodies on the market, and they also have a fully stocked warehouse of dump body parts, PTOs, hydraulic pumps, hoists, anything you need to get back on the road. And they are a full service steel and aluminum service center. They keep I-beam, channel, angle, pipe, round rod, rebar, expanded metal, sheet metal, and aluminum all in stock. And if you've got a big project, they do commercial manufacturing to your specs. Logan, since 1904. On last night's program, I brought you an exclusive report at that time about the arrest of the manager of the Mountain Manor apartment complex on College Heights. Uh, we were to sit down with McGuffin County Sheriff Carson Montgomery today with a full update on that investigation. Uh, we were unable to reach him, and we will put that off until at least Monday. But we do believe a rather lengthy, and we also still believe an ongoing investigation uh, into Jackie Arnett, who was arrested and taken from uh, his place of work and residence as well. As I told you last night, thousands of dollars were seized, EBT cards, numerous were seized, a pop machine, and a host of other items all part of the ongoing investigation, but we just don't have any new details on it to share with you tonight, but I will, I promise, at the first of next week. I do have an update on a story that I wasn't really expecting this quick, but I did get some information just after I left you last evening about two more men arrested in the copper thefts 
thefts that have been ongoing in West Liberty, in addition to the two McGoffin County men that I showed you last night who have been arrested, two others have now been taken into custody for stealing over fifty to sixty thousand dollars worth of copper and other materials from the Hinkle Company in West Liberty. These were surveillance video or photographs captured during some of those thefts, and it was identifying characteristics of the two men as well as the car belonging to one of them used in one of the crimes, and some other tips that came into authorities, including from some of our viewers who helped share some information with state and local police that led to the arrest of two men, as I told you last night, that being 47-year-old Kenneth Mullins and 44-year-old Ricky Salyer, both charged with criminal mischief in the first degree, burglary in the third, and theft by unlawful taking. Now, I did also share with you last night that there were other men also depicted in some of the photographs, possibly a total of five individuals involved. So far, they have identified now four. In addition to Mullins and Salyer, two other men have now been identified, and they've also been arrested as well, facing similar charges for a copper theft and other items also stolen and or damaged from the Hinkle Hot Mix Plant in West Liberty. In addition to Salyer and Mullins, two other men now believed to be part of the events that took place at least on July the 19th and 20th. The Kentucky State Police out of Moorhead, Officer Donnie McGraw, with the assistance of Post 9 out of Pikeville and the West Liberty Police Department, and many tips once again coming in from the surrounding communities have arrested as well two other individuals, 39-year-old Frank Seagraves of Olive Hill and a 19-year-old, a teenager from West Liberty, identified as Richie Gilliam charged with theft by unlawful taking. They, too, lodged in the Big Sandy Regional Detention Center in Johnson County. And part of events that they, being police, believe were responsible for the theft of over $50,000 in the copper and the other items taken from the mix plant belonging to Hinkle. And the investigation, I'm told, is still ongoing. A birthday wish starts off your McGoffin Farm Bureau community calendar this Friday evening with a happy birthday wish going out to Kathy Combs Patrick with lots of love. Misty and Larry say wish her the best. Here it is. Happy, happy birthday. Kathy Combs Patrick. This just in, North McGoffin Elementary Site-Based Council has a special meeting that's been called for this coming Monday at 4.30 in the school's conference room. Once again, North McGoffin Site-Based is having a special meeting Monday at 4.30. And also from everyone at North McGoffin Elementary, their kinder camp is going to be July the 26th and 7th. That's next Wednesday and Thursday from 9 in the morning till 2. Parents, you're welcome to attend too. And they're going to have several guest presenters and a lot of activities. Students will have the opportunity to meet their teachers and the staff. And lunch will be provided. And North McGoffin's Back to School Night has been set for August the 7th. Also an important event for parents and students. Class rosters will be available then. And while we're on the subject of school starting, which no one really wants to be on that subject, Head Start, they're now enrolling in McGoffin County. If your child's going to be three or four by August the 1st, you want to apply soon because spots are limited. So apply today to get your child a Head Start. You can also call the office at 349-3488. Tomorrow's going to be a big day for the 1081 yard sale. If you can get on 1081, oh, I forgot before I get to that. I guess they're a little out of order here. Don't forget, well, the Water Into Wine Food Pantry has Senior Day set for Tuesday of next week from 8.30 till noon. The regular day of distribution at the food pantry is Wednesday, 8.30 till 3.30, and of course they break for an hour in between to kind of get lunch and regroup. With that said, tomorrow's a big day, the 1081 yard sale. My miles-long yard sale that you can find all sorts of great deals and bargains and all sorts of items. They will be setting up, I know, in various places in front of homes and other locations, and that also includes the Literals Fork Church, where they're selling all this in front of you and more. A wonderful concession stand and sale, and you can even set up if you want to in the morning and have your yard sale there and join them. They've got a great menu, and it's going to be a great cause, and they hope that you'll stop by while you're out perusing all the yard sale items tomorrow on 1081. Stop by our community calendar anytime you've got an announcement. This is how you get them on the show. Tell me, and I'll tell everyone about it. Turning to obituaries, a service provided by the McGoffin County Funeral Home, a reminder of services to be held tomorrow at 2 in honor of David Tackett, David Earl Tackett of Sitka, who passed away at the age of 69. Services also to be held this Sunday 
by the way, my apologies, Mr. Tackett's services at the McGoffa County Funeral Home. And services Sunday at 1 for Barbara Sue Smith at the Gun Creek United Baptist Church. Barbara Sue Fletcher Smith, 78, of Royalton. Services Sunday at 1 at the church. We are all human. Because we're not perfect, we tend to make mistakes. Unfortunately, some mistakes are severe and carry more consequences than others. If you have been hurt in a car wreck, a truck wreck, or because of someone's mistake, reckless or careless behavior, you deserve help with your medical expenses, lost wages, and serious permanent pain and injuries that you have been made to suffer and will continue to suffer for the rest of your life. If you have been injured, I can help. I'm attorney Don Wayne McFarland, Call me and let me go to work for you. 349-9000. Wanting you to have a healthier life means providing access to quality, affordable health care. And to do exactly that, Hope Family Medical Center offers full dental care with Dr. Pratt and his team, a pediatrician team of three doctors and nurses and moms. Complete health care by family physician Dr. Kelly Pratt and nurse practitioners Mildred Sizemore, Gail Faria, Shannon Conley, and Heather Blair behavioral health services with Kimberly Davis with in-house lab testing and results in-house x-ray and pharmacy and all the caring knowledge and experience that these medical professionals represent at Hope Family Medical Center A tire more than 25% low, about 8 pounds, makes you 3 times more likely and worn out tires 11 times more likely to be in a tire related crash. Don't take your or their safety for granted. Come in for a free inspection, 6 months no interest financing, the best price and best selection at Conley Tire in Staffordsville. Get your $10 tickets now for the 14th annual and perhaps biggest community day yet. Featuring the incredible Rhonda Vincent and the Rage and other headliners like the Dave Adkins Band, the Edgar Loudermilk Band with Jeff Autry, Toddy Preston and the Black Powder Express, and many, many, many more. And all the food, fun, games, and fabulous prizes that you can stand. All for just 10 bucks. And kids 12 and under, they get in for free. Community Day in the Ramey Park in Sagersville is Saturday, August the 19th. Here's another rare find at Gateway Motors. This Subaru Tribeca all-wheel drive loaded with third row seating and more and great deals and low payments, most under $200 on units like this 07 Santa Fe all-wheel drive. This 2012 F-150. How about this 08 Yukon all-wheel drive, 90,000 miles, a one owner and everything else on the lot at Gateway Motors in Sagersville. Three, four, nine cars. Up next, and before I go any further, a reminder, a shortened down version of the report that I aired a few days ago with McGoffin County Athletic Director Neil West, who tells us about Paul B. Hall and their orthopedic surgeon, Dr. Arms, making a stop at the McGoffin County High School this Monday with a lot of information and free sports physicals for all student athletes. We're we'll meeting with all their elementary and high school athletes, and on the 24th, they're coming to McGoffin County's College Sports Expo. Uh, he's going to talk about injuries, about pre how to prevent injuries, uh, staying hydrated, weightlifting, and during this process, they're going to have uh, doctors with them and physicians' assistants to give all sports physicals to any elementary, middle school, or high school athlete that hasn't had a physical. They will do it for free. West says the preseason sports expo presented by Paul B. Hall here at the McGoffin County High School Gymnasium is a great opportunity for a service that every student athlete, regardless of age or sport, has to have. And that this event will be a great savings for parents, especially those who maybe have more, many more than one playing sports. Every person that participates in any kind of sports, whether it's elementary, middle school, or high school, has to have a sports physical. Uh, any, them physicals will run anywhere from 25 to 50 bucks, depends where you go to. You can get it here for free. No cost, no nothing. Uh, that's if you play on the black and blue team or uh, 
third and fourth grade team, fifth and sixth grade team, seventh and eighth grade team, or even a high school team. If you play baseball that, or softball that don't start till the spring, your physical is good, it will last the whole year. So and anybody that wants to come out and participate is more than welcome. And once again, that's this coming Monday night at 6 in the McGough County High School Gymnasium. Wish I had a little, well, I've got some good news for you at the end of the rainbow, so to speak. But the, for your weekend, man, it's just going to be hot again tomorrow. And even though the 80s look good Sunday, I mean, you're talking about three degrees. The humidity levels might fall a little bit, but it's still going to be a hot one. But there is a cool down in store that we've been kind of looking forward to now for a while. Partly cloudy skies tonight, a 20% chance of isolated showers. I just checked the radar, so saw no reason of even trying to put it on screen and pull it up because there was nothing around the area. Nothing at the 6.30 time frame. Don't expect there to be. There might be a little shower or storm blow up, but right now most all that activity has been well to our north and really not expecting much of it to get to here, uh, at least in the near future. So tonight, partly cloudy, that tiny chance of some isolated showers and a low of 73 for your Saturday, a 30% chance of showers and thunderstorms. That's mainly after 1 o'clock tomorrow in the afternoon, otherwise mostly sunny and hot. 91 is what it will read on the thermometer. It will feel like it's 101 tomorrow one of the hottest days that we've had, if not. 101 is what it's going to feel like with heat indices factored in tomorrow. Nevertheless, 73 tomorrow night. Saturday, or rather Sunday, is an effect of a cold front that's going to start to work its way in finally as high pressure finally starts to ease up a little bit. 88 and partly sunny, and a 30 to growing 50% chance of showers, I think, by the afternoon on your Sunday. A better shot, one of the best shots we've had at some rain in a while. And after the hot weekend, definitely a little more comfortable. Hopefully some rain. Still in a great lot in the forecast. 85, mostly sunny. Definitely more comfortable at the start of next week. 66 for nighttime lows. And a 40% chance of showers on your Monday. Zero chance on your Tuesday right now. And only a 20% chance on your Wednesday. Definitely some good news is the temperatures will be more comfortable. We still really could use some rain. And once again, with all the news that I already have to work on for next week, we, of course, will be following any local news that develops over the course of your weekend, which I hope is happy, safe, and joyous for you all. For now, thank you for watching. Good night, and hope to see you next time.